I'm Matt Anderson, Curator of Transportation at the Henry Ford. We're standing beside a replica passenger coach of the type used on American railroads about 1860. It was built at Ford Motor Company's Rouge plant and used in the Lights Golden Jubilee ceremony on October 21, 1929. The car was part of a train that carried Henry and Clara Ford, Thomas and Mina Edison, and President Herbert Hoover and First Lady Lou Hoover from Detroit to Greenfield Village for the ceremony, which marked the 50th anniversary of Edison's light bulb and the dedication of what became the Henry Ford. This car is a replica, but it's well done and gives us a real sense of what railroad travel in the Civil War era was like. There were windows and vents to add light and encourage air circulation. Notice the single heating stove, the water dispenser, usually with just a single cup shared by everyone. The walkover seat backs, which could be flipped so that passengers faced forward whichever direction the car traveled. And the restroom, which was little more than a seat with a hole through the car's floor. Notice the bell cord hanging from the ceiling. It ran the full length of the train and connected to a small bell in the locomotive cab. It allowed the conductor to signal the locomotive crew if the train had to make an unscheduled stop or if there was some other emergency. Throughout the car's interior, wood surfaces are coated with thick varnish. It's not only pleasing to the eye, it's also practical. The slick surface resisted water, and dirt, and cinders, and it was also easy to wipe clean. But all of that varnished wood, combined with the heating stove, posed a real risk of fire in the event that the car derailed. Written accounts provide vivid descriptions of train travel at the time. There were people talking loudly, babies crying, perhaps your seatmate snoring. In other words, it was just like flying on an airline today. But even with all of those inconveniences, and even with a top speed that was only somewhere around 20 miles an hour, passenger coaches like this represented the best in overland travel in the mid-19th century United States.